at some point, people decided that peacocks had the right idea and feathered flamboyance entered the fashion world. This phrase comes from the Britex Fabrics article, Feathers in Fashion, A History of Plumage. After last week's Atlantic Ministry Area service, where Susie was quite excited by the thought of area pastors wearing feather boas, how could I not? Knowing too that Pastor Rick in Lunenburg has a green fuzzy boa-esque scarf for the service this morning in his congregation. The boa though reminds me of a story. Well, a few stories that I want to share with you in conversation with today's gospel reading from Luke. When arriving in my first parish, I was a fish out of water. I was 25 from two provinces away with a love of liturgy, bursting with creativity and lots of ideas. I didn't own a black suit coat and all my socks were patterned, including a couple of pairs of rainbow toe socks. I was the first woman pastor in the area and my closest colleagues were an hour across the border into the US or three hours south at the other end of the province. Reflecting back, I showed up with a feathered flamboyance and entered a subtle, faithful faith community. Different fish. Being a feather boa sort, ministering with a different kind of fish, there were many encounters on the lake, fishing to get to know each other. I clearly remember the first service that I preached. I was nervous and I was excited, wanting to prove myself that I could do this. It wasn't until halfway through the sermon when there was a collective release of air. There was an acceptance that at least our Sunday morning relationship was going to be okay. I realized that nothing was going to be thrown at me and the congregation learned, heard that I could preach. I clearly remember the first time that I arrived at the local restaurant where the older men had their morning coffee hangout. After finding a chair when I walked in, Oh, sorry. After finding a chair, I joined them. The men were rather quiet. They'd been talking up a storm before I had walked in. The conversation changed. It was politely pleasant. I was invited to join them again anytime. So the second time I showed up, the men were different. They were themselves. There was a collective acceptance. I came back. I had accepted their invitation. I thought they were okay. And then it happened. Fish story number one. And then fish story after fish story. I was trusted with their sacred stories. The ones that they told each other. Stories told a hundred times and crafted with new exaggerations and fantastical feats in each telling. I heard the miraculous. Boats so laden with fish that it took the calling of buddies to bring in the hall. There was so much abundance. They would eat for a winter and their neighbors too, freezers full. The telling of the fish stories though was not about the fish stories at all. The telling of fish stories was about trust and acceptance sharing experiences, as exaggerated as they might have been, with another person, tested, testing the listener's listening ability, their caring ability, their openness to laugh, their openness to the truth nuggets interspersed in the miraculous story. The telling of fish stories and hearing fish stories meant that later on, as we lived in community, I would hear the Peter please too. 
Remember in the gospel, Peter says, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. The fish stories built enough trust that they knew I would not leave. I would hear their confessions, and yes, they were heavy. Secrets, alcoholism, violence, adultery, depression, lack of faith, bankruptcy, inner demons for the lack of a better term. And in that moment, I was Jesus in Simon's boat, out in the deep water far from the shore, rocking back and forth where the miracle was not about the abundance of fish or the fish stories, but the confession of being human. Jesus sat in the boat with Simon that day and listened. Jesus did not turn Simon away. Jesus accepted Simon. That may be, Simon, but do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. In the articulation of not being perfect, of failing to love God, to love the neighbor, in this raw, uncut, unexaggerated moment, Jesus called Simon to go and be about the very thing that he confessed that he failed to do. This is Black History Month. Synod's Racial Justice Advisory Group has challenged members of the Synod to do something, to read a novel by a Black author, learn black, about Black Canadians, seek out presentations offered by local libraries or Black cultural groups, do something. Now, obviously, I have been thinking about fishing stories for the past week, so I decided to do a little search about fishing, and I learned two things. In St. John, New Brunswick, prior to 1870, the growing black population was barred from living in the city limit and from fishing in the St. John Harbor. Further exploration of blacks fishing in Canada led me to the work of Canadian historian and professor at Dalhousie University, Afu Cooper. She writes about connections between Newfoundland and Jamaican culture. For centuries, Newfoundland cod fed black slaves in the Caribbean. Dried cod went down and rum, screech, and molasses came back. Cod is Jamaica's national dish. Slaves from the Caribbean were brought to the Grand Banks to go fishing, coming into the St. John's Harbor to dry the cod. Ships with black fishers were so excellent at it that whites banned them from coming to fish locally. These tidbits of history of black lives in St. John and St. John's point to a group of people putting a kibosh on miracles. Good fishers are stopped. White government worked at controlling experience and the possibility of abundance. The miracle of abundance of fish was right there, but the moment was lost. Settlers decided not to face and articulate their humanness, the sense of inadequacy, unworthiness, shame, guilt, letting go of the ego, as Simon did. If they, if they had, they would have experienced the miracle, invited others and other boats to help, and then move on to work at going fishing together. Somehow the miracle passed and ego drove the people of St. John and St. John's to build walls hold on to authority, advance one's cause above another, create systems to improve the life of some, to segregate life, to have a better life at the expense of others. Jesus had already been out and about doing ministry. Calling the disciples was not the first task after baptism, like it is in some of the other gospels. Today was just another miracle 
and another day at the office for Jesus. Already crowds were following Jesus. That's why Jesus climbed into Simon's boat in the first place, so that the boat could be set out a bit from the shore and Jesus could sit and teach from there. After teaching, Jesus went out to the deeps to go fishing. The nets were dropped and Simon called other boats to come and help. There was enough fish for today and tomorrow and for the community the tomorrow after tomorrow. Abundance allowed them to leave. Everything at home was okay. The story though is not about this miracle and this abundance. The story is the miracle that happened when Jesus set out with them and listened to their fish stories. Sharing their stories, they shared themselves. Confession was made, allowing eyes to open. Jesus was still there accepting them with all their sins and their foibles and offering, fear not, come fish for people. And they left their boats on the shore and followed Jesus. It is time to leave our boats on the shore along with the cod, the rum, and the molasses, to be bearers of the true miracle, accepting human confession and being God's presence. So go, wear your flamboyant, fabulous, flamboyant feathers, and go, listen to others' fish stories. Amen.